All right, guys, what's up? It's me again. <laughs> Down in San Diego today, I'm gonna to meet up with Dowdy in a little bit. Question of the video is, is skateboarding still worth getting into in 2021? As someone that's been skateboarding for a long time, I'm always interested to why people get into skating. Like if someone says they've been skating for like a year or two, I often ask them like, what got you into skateboarding? And uh, it's quite interesting what they come back with. Sometimes it can be like friends or family that skate or they seen something on TV about skateboarding and they seen a movie that had a little bit of skateboarding in it. Or like, I've even heard TikTok. People get into skateboarding from TikTok, which is a positive, I guess, but yeah. Dowdy and I are rolling out from City Heights to his uh, little slab spot, the DIY spot that's still going. Pretty keen to check it out, haven't been down there, looks like there's some more stuff to skate, so yeah. I'm uh, having a bit of trouble skating, like my, you know when you skate you have that mind-body kind of connection, which, is, uh, which allows you to skate and like you can just, you're like one, I feel like my mind and my body are like two different things and I'm like, my mind knows how to do the trick but my body is like, Ugh. I haven't skated for a minute though, so hopefully at this next spot I can get some more clips. So I just googled it and it's brain fog. My brain feels foggy. Kind of a weird description, but uh, yeah. My brain feels foggy, I hope it goes away because I want to be able to skate today. It's my first proper skate since like a few weeks ago, so my ankle still hurts a little bit. I'm just trying to push through for you guys. And plus I want to skate today. It's nice weather outside, it's not like 40 degrees outside. It's not 100 degrees Fahrenheit I should say. But it's like 40 degrees Celsius up here, so yeah. But back to the topic of the video. So I feel like skateboarding has never before had this amount of exposure with it being in the Olympics and everything now. I mean, the second biggest amount of exposure I think skateboarding has had was like the X Games when Tony Hawk landed the 900. So I feel like with more eyes on skateboarding, people are gonna take more interest into skating they're gonna to wanna to fall down that rabbit hole per se, and then you'll have more people wanting to buy setups and like learn new tricks and just generally learn about the skateboarding lifestyle and culture and sport. I don't know if you can call skateboarding a sport. Can you call skateboarding a sport now it's been in the Olympics? I don't know, I feel weird calling it a sport. I feel like it's more of a lifestyle, I guess. Like if I didn't skateboard, I don't know, I feel like I wouldn't know who I am. All right, we got some vegan cookies and a brisk to fight this brain fog. Hopefully this gives me a boost. Feeling tired today. You find the weirdest stuff at DIYs. Look at this bag full of donuts that have been tossed because they're expired or something from like 7-Eleven. I reckon they've come from 7-Eleven. 
because they've got to chuck their donuts out like at the end of the day and they've gone in the dumpster and just pulled them out check them out it's gnarly you can still smell them but yeah they look nasty <laughs> haven't seen this spot before really cool little DIY down here in San Diego Dowdy and a few other guys did majority of the work I think I know he put in that quarter pipe and this little cool curb spine thing behind me um, looks like some other people have like brought some other random stuff down this bench is really sick a few more curbs I'm not, I don't think Dowdy did this one I think someone else might have done this but it is solid really nice manual pad slash ledge combo here there's a sick pole jam someone's just grabbed a pole and literally just jammed it into the ground it's pretty sick Dowdy and I have been skating this little DIY here for a little while now um, I was just curious to hear your point of view about people coming into skating via different mediums like how long have you been skating now? Ah uh, man it's always hard but I think I've been skating probably for how old am I now? I just turned 35 so Probably like realistically like 25 years. Yeah. Like that's like, like a could, lifer. But like for like a, a good amount of time. But to be honest, my dad had a skateboard. And skateboards were always around me. I was very okay. fortunate and very privileged to have access to that. But at the same time, I didn't really care for it because it was there. Yeah. So like it didn't intrigue me as much as like other people were like, maybe however people discover skateboarding, sometimes it can intrigue you so much more because it's something that you don't see so often so for me it was like very common that it was just there i've been skating pretty much my whole life yeah okay cool yeah because a lot of a lot of younger kids a lot of younger kids are getting into skating via like dowdy said fashion and then there's like tiktok instagram um you ever see those movie clips and then there's like skateboarding in the movie or like mid 90s even yes that's a I big mean, that one alone like because it's like the camaraderie i think it, also it's like the culture right like yeah i think a big part of why people gravitate towards skateboarding in general is not even the act of skateboarding but it's the culture of skateboarding it's like yeah. people enjoy the idea of having friends to go out and do stuff with and kind of like be in their own social bubble and create their own identities in a way so I mean, the act of skateboarding is obviously the, the core of it, but at the same yeah. time, I think people gravitate to just like the culture of skateboarding in general. For sure, for sure, yeah. Um, what would you, what advice would you offer to anyone that's like trying to, because people are intimidated to start skating. Yeah. I mean, if it's a It's brand an intimidating new, thing. Yeah, what would you, what advice would you give to someone like wanting to get into skating, but they're kind of hesitant? Um, well, I think the first thing I would say is just find your comfort zone and find like, what resonates with you most. Like I skate more transition, Sean skates more street, but I think that was because like when I saw a transition when I was younger, I resonated with that and it made sense to me. And I was really intimidated by the street section. Like I was just so scared to go over there. And to me at the skate park, there was no one skating the bull. So it was easy for me to like, just go over there and kind of like mess around with the bull and get comfortable there. So I think it's like finding a comfort zone and finding also like what resonates with you. You know, like you might not want to huck downstairs. You might like freestyle. You can freestyle in a parking lot, so that's cool. You might like flat ground. You can just find like a parking garage and learn flat ground. But like skating alone and progressing alone can be hard. Luckily, we have the internet these days, yeah. so there's Facebook groups, there's YouTube channels. You exactly. know what I mean? There's so many different like resources as far as like progressing. But um, yeah, what was your original question? Hopefully, I didn't go too, <laughs> no, too far on a tangent there. I mean, that was pretty good advice. Like 
find your comfort zone. Really. Find your comfort zone, yeah. yeah. And if you're just getting into it, like, I think the most important thing when you're just getting into it is realize that there are no rules with skateboarding. Like, there's no rules. I try to say it, like, in every video and, like, every trick and everyone's going to try to push their own agenda onto you. Like, here's how you trade flip. Here's how you should look when you skateboard. Here's yeah. the right board to ride. Here's where you should skate, who you shouldn't <laughs> skate with, things like that. So, like, don't listen to any of that. I think it would be good also to realize that um, because they're just trying to make you fit into there. So I guess the point that I'm say, say, getting at is like whatever you like, just do it. Just try it out. And yeah. even if it's not cool, just just keep trying it because, I don't know, you're, you're better off being a big fish in a small pond at some point Definitely. or another. Yeah. yeah. What Dowdy just raised to my attention right now is getting into skating for the right reasons. like. You can get into skating because you're generally interested and you want to progress and you're having fun doing it. Or you can like, there's other paths of like trying to get into it to be cool or to impress your, your crush or like stuff like that, which is fine, I guess, but it won't, it won't you're last not long. You're going to like stick to it. And I think yeah. like if you really want, if you really think like skateboarding is cool and you really want to try it, you have to do it for yourself. More yeah. Or less. You can't do it so that like, just so people think you're cool. Like, you could do it to have friends, that's not what I'm saying, but, like, don't do it just to, like, have, like, social gain. Do it because you truly yeah. feel like it's something that you will get a good um, mental exercise and physical exercise yeah. from. And don't, like, don't let other people's skating kind of put you off. Like, I know sometimes when you roll up to the park and there's people, like, throwing down, it's super intimidating to, like, want to, like, try stuff. But at the end of the day, everyone's there skating and having fun, and they're not going to care what you're doing, you know? As long as you're respectful and you're not kind of like snaking anyone or anything like that, everyone's going to be cool nine times out of ten. So don't let other people's skating ability put you off your own. And like don't let it kind of discredit you as well. Like if you've just learned how to do an ollie or you've learned how to like kickflip, that's rad. Like I remember learning my first kickflip, I was 14 and it was on the street in front of my house and I was like so hyped. Like. Just because your skating isn't at the same level as someone else that's been skating for, you know, five years or six years or whatever, don't let it put you off. Something else, like if you are intimidated by the skate park or by the idea of going and out and skating in public or even going to the skate shop and getting a skateboard, that yeah. can be intimidating, right? Yeah. I think what I'll say with that is like a lot of the times if you're if you're going for it and you're being authentic, most of the time people want to support you. Like if I see someone like slamming at the skate park and they fall normally i want to go help them and like tell yeah. them how to do it because like it gets me excited because i know what that process is like so a lot of times like experienced skaters i won't say good but like experienced skaters a lot of times want to help and like get excited seeing someone else kind of like their fire is getting lit so they want yeah. to like sort of like get a little bit of that 100%. fire as well selfishly <laughs> be, a part, be a part of your journey you know like it so is. i guess what i'm saying is like so skaters are normally pretty supportive individuals yeah. of each other like as, especially if like you're authentically there trying to learn it and like you're falling and you're just trying it like it might sound embarrassing but the reality is you're probably going to look like the coolest person at that park to most of the legit skateboarders like what Dowdy just said about other skaters wanting to help you um if you guys haven't seen that video when i hit my first street handrail dan was there and he was helping me throughout the whole process like i had a mental breakdown i was like i know i could do it but there was that that gap between where you throw down and just about when you're popping there's like a wall and he, he helped me like push through that wall and I was able to get the rail that day and it was sick but just him seeing that kind of fired him up as well so that's like another big thing within skateboarding I think yeah, yeah. that's just sure. like the culture it comes with it so like skating alone is like a whole separate conversation than like what yeah. we're saying sort of because what we're saying is like more if you're intimidated just if you can puncture that barrier I mean, it comes with confidence. I don't know. It can be, you can find it from other ways, not skateboarding, but essentially, you know, just remembering that not everyone's there looking at you, talking about you or judging you. They're yeah. there like on their own mission as well, most of the time. <laughs> We're at the third spot of the day, this little DIY spot that Dowdy had built and then it got ripped out and then someone else fixed it. I don't think we know who fixed, who, do you know who fixed this spot? Cause you built it first, right? Yeah, so quick little story on this spot. It's the craziest. It's like the mystery DIY spot. So originally, me and my buddy Al, we built a ledge that you can see it's kind of getting deteriorated. And then we built two banks. It's exactly what it was, but it was a lot harder. It was more simple. It was just cinder block. And then someone destroyed it within like a week after I posted a video of it. 
And then I sat on it for a while. I was like, I'm not going to do anything. It just sat there. Someone destroyed it. It was crumbled. So they didn't clean it up. It wasn't the city. They just left it there. And then months later, all of a sudden I saw a picture of someone skating it and it was this. So yeah. I have no idea who fixed it. And someone it, came along and used the forms basically. That we yeah. And, uh, it looks smooth. Slowly destroying it. I can give you a video. I don't know if you want it, but the other day I came over here in the morning and this guy was slowly destroying it and I filmed him. And he was like, Did oh, you confront him? Yeah, I confronted him. And <laughs> this is like me just getting here. Look at him. Look he, at him. He's taking all the stuff and putting it in his little bucket. Elbow deep, trying to pull out a, a spot. A harmless little spot. Harmless spot. He's taking hours out of his day to come and do this. And then, like, here he is. <laughs> so we had, like, look a full-on car. Right there is when he's like, oh, shit, I gotta, like, yeah. pretend like I'm nice. <laughs> Crazy. But, yeah, there's these two banks here you can war ride over i don't think i'm gonna be able to war ride over but daddy can do it and there was a ledge in the middle it says there daddy forever and there's also a up ledge crusty crusty east coast pacific northwest style spot here you got a curb and then yeah there's a pretty good flat gap here too down this way hit a ollie and then land here and then roll onto the car park there it's a decent sized gap. Yeah. Yeah, I land into a manual. Oh, wow. That's so sick. got out really smooth though. <laughs> Thanks G. To summarize on the topic of the video, I think it's rad if you're wanting to get into skateboarding this year or even next year or last year, you know. The more people getting into skateboarding, I keep trying to say like the sport. Do you feel like it's a sport or a lifestyle? I feel oh, like... No, that's like a, such a like, that's a t topic a, for another video, right? Yeah, like, that's is a... Is skateboarding a sport or is it a lifestyle? Yeah. Or is it an art form? I mean, it's so subjective. It's like whatever you want to make. like. If it's a contest, probably more of a sport term, but if it's like a street part, it's probably more on the art side. Like, yeah. It can like range. That's what's beautiful it's a totally, about skateboarding. Yeah, it's, it's different realms of skateboarding within skateboarding. But to touch base with the topic, I think it's rad because, um, well, if you guys are watching from Australia, there's a chain of skate stores, skate shops, sorry, called Fast Times. I did a bit of research and Fast Times is actually owned by Zoomies. So Zoomies have invested money down under to open up these shops and a few of my friends um, applied to work there a couple of my friends are on the team no a couple one of my friends on the team sorry and he works there as well shouts out to Watsi who works at Fast Times and it's sick because it's giving more of a community sense to skateboarding like my local mall in my old hometown now has a big skate shop and it's going to bring more kids in that are buying completes around their birthday around Christmas they're walking by it every day they're going to say oh I wonder what that thing is on the wall there mummy can we go and have a look you know more skate parks yeah and then it's just it's raising more skate awareness so I think that's the biggest part is like skate awareness and I think the Olympics is like the biggest amount of exposure yeah there's been had, in know. history you know so it's definitely a good thing don't let don't let it be like, oh, nah, don't get into skating because you missed that bus. Like, it's already been, like, don't listen to people that talk like that. Like, yeah. if you want to get into skating, like, get into it, you know? Anything, like, skating for sure, like, that's the topic of this video, but it's, like, in general, if you enjoy doing something, just because it's saturated or desaturated doesn't mean you have to, like, not do it based off, like, the market, the current yeah. market or whatever, you know? Like, just, yeah, skateboarding is sick, and it's always going to be here, and it's always going to be something very special, so... You know, if it's something that excites you, try it out. Yeah, definitely. You have our blessing. <laughs> <laughs>